Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Christopher Tay. I'm here to teach about uh, agroecology as well as to talk about an uh, important subject which affects agriculture, which is climate change. I will discuss what is climate change and how it affects agriculture. So, agroecology result, uh, we will talk about climate, the soil, the terrain, as well as the yields, crop yields. Now, there are many definitions to agroecological agro zones, but uh, the basic idea is very simple. As defined by the Food Agriculture Organization, FAO, agroecological zone is simply classifying or dividing up an area based on its climate, the terrain or land form, the soil types, the land cover, how much vegetation there is for instance, and the potentials and constraints for land use. So that this piece of land is then divided into many uh, homogeneous units so that each unit has similar properties, uh, each land area within this unit have similar properties to each other, whether it's based on climate, land form or soils, land cover and potentials and constraints for land use. Now this uh, this is a mapping of the world area based on the climate. As you can see um, the, the near areas near the equator they are red including Malaysia you can see and as you go further up the equator the color changes from uh, yellow orange green to blue and as you go further down likewise from red to yellow and green and the red the red means it's hot humid wet and as you go further up it's cooler and also certain areas are drier so this is a very nice uh, zoning yeah, which shows that the further the equator is it becomes cooler uh, and nearer the equator it becomes warmer some parts of uh, Malaysia for instance here you can see uh, it's uh, red that means it's tropical and Africa as well and uh, Brazil and so on yeah. and the higher up Europe uh, Central Asia is also uh, green which is about temperate cool climates and as you go further up it's very cold eh? uh, the Arctic uh, uh, Scandinavian countries North America and so on this is based on uh, agroecological zone based on climate uh, sorry based on soil it's a rainbow of colors you can see multiple colors this goes to show that the world soils is not uniform uh, different areas have different soils eh? uh, as you can see, it's not so clear like the weather, like the climate, where it's rainbow, right? it's a scattering of colors, as you can see. Uh, South America, you can see uh, multiple of colors because they are made up of different types of soils. Uh, Malaysia, uh, mostly uh, yellow, which is basically, uh, as you can see down, Malaysia generally has two groups of soils, the old soils, which is acrisols, ferrosols, and nitosols. And generally the younger soils, which are glaze soils, candy soils, and pot soils. Now this is based on terrain. Uh, terrain means this, uh, the legend that you see here. This is the uh, how flat or how steep it is. Uh, the darker green means it's quite a flat land, level land. And as you go higher, yellow, uh, orange, and red, they are very steep. As you can, uh, so most of it is about uh, green colors. Uh, this shows to show that uh, a, a large area is uh, quite flat, but there are other areas uh, like Malaysia. As it's not very clear here, but uh, perhaps in your slide you will see that the color is basically in yellow. Eh? That means it's not flat and it's not very steep. And now, of course, the terrain will affect uh, agriculture activities. Uh, the flatter it is, the, the, the easier to to work the agriculture land. The steeper it is erosion becomes a problem and you have to have certain uh, mitigation methods to prevent erosion and makes agriculture harder and more critical to environmental concerns. Uh, some areas like Kazakhstan in the um, uh, Central Asia uh, these are rather flat as you can because this whole country is on a step which is very flat very flat and you can uh, have large machineries uh, going through the agriculture land but Malaysia uh, large large uh, agricultural equipments like tractors is not practical because our land is just not as flat as other countries. 
Uh, this is based on land cover. Uh, the greener it is, that means the, the country is uh, covered with uh, lots of vegetations. Uh, Malaysia is quite vegetated, it's about 60% forested, but some areas are not, eh? and Australia and so on. Uh, this is the crop growing land. Base, uh, we divide, it, divide the land area of the world into different zones where it, where it shows how long can we grow a crop. Eh? Malaysia, because it's in the tropics, it's purple, which means that, uh, as you can see the legend here, it's, uh, we can plant our crops all year round. Our crops have no difficulty uh, growing any time. Eh? Uh, but some countries know eh? you have only a specific period in a year, a duration of length, where you can grow your crops. Eh? In the winter, for instance, only certain crops can grow, or even you can't grow any crops in that period. So that part of the season in the year is not available for growing crops. But this is not true for Malaysia, where it's uh, because of the climate, with a very stable and uniform climate, we can grow crops all year round. Uh, this is the land area for rain-fed soil suitability. Low inputs means the top title. The low inputs means uh, it's based on subsistence. Eh? That means very little input that we use. Basically, either very little or no fertilizers we add. Eh? Uh, and you can see the area. Um, a green means very good, yellow uh, in the middle, and red means uh, very bad for uh, agriculture because of land uh, soil suitability. Yeah? Malaysia is in the middle, uh, yellow. Uh, compare this picture with this. This is rain fed soil suitability with high inputs. This was low input, it's basically yellow, greenish yellows. But when you have high inputs, suddenly the whole land area becomes very green. That means that with high inputs, with high fertilizer, high labor uh, management, you can make a soil which is not uh, originally fertile, more fertile for agriculture purposes. Eh? So from yellow to green, eh? so high input. High input usually means uh, commercial far farming style. Uh, this is rain fed, just based on rain and uh, soil suitability. Rain fed means uh, depending solely on rain, no irrigation for water. Uh, this is rain fed and terrain suitability, low input, uh, limitation again because of you only depend on the rain for your water and the terrain. Flat terrain makes agriculture easier, steep terrain makes agriculture more difficult. Uh, low inputs mostly results in you know lots of yellow and greenish yellows, but if you have high inputs, if uh, management, proper management, proper inputs, you can work a soil uh, or an area into a productive area. As you can see from yellow greenish to lots of greens, eh, to show that the importance of uh, high inputs. Uh, this is the yield gap ratios. This goal shows that uh, uh, the legend, eh? Red, green means uh, the, the ratio between the actual yield and the potential yield is one or very close to one. That means uh, the actual yield, what you're actually get, getting, is almost the same as what the crop can give you. Eh? What you want is one. That means uh, you are achieving the maximum yield possible. So what you want is green, but as you can see, uh, not many areas are green. Uh, Malaysia is light green, almost one, but not really one. But some areas like India, even the whole of country of India is an agriculture country, but the yield gap is uh, yellow to red. That means it's not quite far away from one, uh, about here, about 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Uh. And uh, some parts of North America, America, which is green, which is good. Central America, uh, orange. Uh, South America, some parts, some parts are green but yellow. Eh? In Africa, the biggest continent, but it's red. Eh? That means there's a huge potential to increase the yield. Eh? They're only getting only a very small uh, potential of what they could get. Eh? Uh, Central Asia, uh, orange red. Europe, Western Europe, uh, green. That means they are getting very high uh, yields. Eh? To, to, they are meeting their potentials. Okay, uh, desert, before I go into climate change, I'd like to talk about uh, desert. Desert, uh, as you know, it's uh, very little rain, 
less than 250 millimeters uh, per year. The vegetation is very sparse, it's very dry, very hot, especially in the day, but ironically very cool at night uh, because of lack of cloud cover to trap the heat. And agriculture in desert land is almost impossible right? without any help of irrigation. If you depend on rain, uh, agriculture will not be able to survive. Uh, this shows some examples of uh, desert areas. You can, you can see these pictures. Uh, the crops are very sparse, are very few, uh, and limited to uh, shrubs. Eh? Um, and you can see very little rain, very dry, so agriculture is very difficult in such an area. And uh, now this is a very interesting picture. It shows a, concent a, con a circle. This is, where, this is right in the middle of a desert. As you can see, they're brown, very dry, and yet they are doing agriculture activities eh, in this circle areas here. Uh, this, this is found in uh, some places in the Middle East, like Libya. Uh, they do have agriculture activities right in the middle of the desert. And where they get their water from is from aquifers or groundwater. So, you only they require water from uh, groundwater to supply water in order to grow crops right in the middle. Eh? And this is an aerial photo. As you can see, they are very interesting, like buttons, eh? because these are areas where farming is done. And as you can see, some areas are green, some areas are brown, like here. Uh, this means these brown areas that you see here, these are uh, very. These are areas which have where the aquifers have dried up, so the land has stopped producing because water has run out. Uh, the only green areas that you see, these are the active areas which have still supply of water. So even desert farming, although water can be found, provided there is groundwater, it's not sustainable in the meaning that it cannot continue forever. It's only for a short span. After a while, not when water runs out, uh, these green areas become brown and agriculture just stops.